I've mentioned statin withdrawal symptoms a few times, but never gone into why it's such an unknown phenomenon. Let's explore that and what it tells us about the biases of mainstream prostatin medicine. Stay tuned. Before we get into it, we need to get into an important distinction, and that is what is the difference between withdrawal symptoms and withdrawal consequences? So first let's look at symptoms. Withdrawal symptoms are physiological or psychological reactions that occur when a person abruptly stops or reduces the use of a drug to which their body has adapted. These symptoms arise as the body attempts to reestablish balance in the absence of the drug. It's directly linked to the drug's pharmacological effects. Symptoms are often the reverse of what the drug was designed to do, but not always. For example, stopping a statin might cause artificially elevated cholesterol levels, which is known as the rebound effect. The thing that my first PCP who put me on statins denied existed when I got off statins and I experienced a rebound effect. There is an acute time frame. Symptoms typically emerge shortly after discontinuation and are time limited. And they're caused by dependency or adaptation. And this is important because we're going to get into this in more detail. The body or brain has adjusted to the presence of the drug and its absence disrupts homeostasis. We're going to talk about homeostasis especially in a few moments. Homeostasis can be briefly defined as a physiological equilibrium, if that helps. Absent any data to the contrary, there's no reason to expect that statins are any more or less susceptible to withdrawal effects than any other drug. Withdrawal consequences, on the other hand, are the long-term fallout from not taking the drug. In most cases, these consequences are the same as from not starting the therapy in the first place, in this case, never taking the drug. When we pose the question, are there withdrawal symptoms from statins, this is how the question gets answered. I posed this to Google and it gave me a bunch of links and one of them was to the Cleveland Clinic. They maintain in this article that researchers have shown that when people stop taking statins, they have a much higher likelihood of major heart events, including heart attack, stroke, transient ischemic attack, TIAs, thoracic aortic aneurysm, TAA, and heart failure. The point of all of these is these are actually consequences. They are not symptoms. They are not withdrawal symptoms. So even though when I asked the question, I was given a link to this article, it is not about withdrawal symptoms. If these consequences are the same magnitude as if the patient didn't take statins in the first place, then they represent a return to the pre-statin risk levels. Getting off the statin is not the source of the risk. The patient's baseline risk is the source of the risk. But if these are worse than if the patient didn't take the statins in the first place, then this implies that the statins are making the underlying condition worse. Now, I find that kind of highly illogical, but that's what the Cleveland Clinic told us. Another article was from the UK NHS, National Health Service, and they categorically state, you will not get any withdrawal symptoms. However, stopping atorvastatin, which is Lipitor, may cause your cholesterol to rise. Well, first they're stating as a fact something that just has not been researched. It's not a recognized thing. The second statement here would better be worded as, stopping atorvastatin may cause your cholesterol to return to its natural levels. Is it causing it to rise? No, it's just not lowering it artificially anymore and it returns to its normal level, it may have a rebound effect, but eventually it'll come back down to whatever is your natural level. So let's look at the answer I got from Google, their generative AI response to my inquiry, are there withdrawal effects from getting off statins? And this is very interesting because this is a totally contradictory answer. It's full of non sequiturs and it really shows how weak this particular AI is. They state categorically, there are no withdrawal symptoms from stopping statins suddenly or gradually. However, stopping statins can lead to serious health consequences. Then they say high cholesterol, so you know that good old high cholesterol is a problem in and of itself, applies to everybody. So we know how ridiculous that is. High cholesterol in and of itself is not necessarily bad. Then they go on to talk about muscle pain, stiffness and weakness, and cognitive issues. These are adverse effects of being on statins, 
And they're making this claim that this happens if you get off statins. If you get off statins, you're going to get elevated creatine kinase levels, which could indicate muscle damage. The extreme case of that is rhabdomyolysis. This non sequitur they're throwing at us here is that, no, there's no withdrawal symptoms from getting off statins, but it may lead to rhabdomyolysis. They don't say that specifically, but it leads to muscle pain. That's totally incorrect. I think the problem is that AI is recognizing word patterns or something of that sort, and it is conflicting two different things and it's making a mishmash of this whole question that I put to it. If it was completely wrong, but at least internally consistent, that would be understandable. But these answers that I was given aren't even internally consistent. So it makes absolutely no sense. Now I have in the past given this quote from Dr. Beatrice Golom. It was in an interview. You can find the link in the description. And she says, I think statins have both pro-oxidant and antioxidant effects and that the antioxidant effects can go away first. So it leave a period of vulnerability where people actually worsen their statin side effects by stopping the statin. That's exactly what I've experienced. And I'll get into that in, in a few moments. And then she recommends patients who are stopping statins start taking CoQ10 a few weeks before. This is an acknowledgement and a possible mechanism by which withdrawal symptoms can occur if you get off statins. But there's a more basic logical argument here. So let's talk about homeostasis. Homeostasis is that physiological equilibrium I talked about. And quite often when you first get on statins, you'll experience immediate adverse effects, muscle pains or whatever, and you'll be told, oh, you'll get used to them. Now, if the doctor really means you'll get used to them, well, that's absurd. I'm not gonna get used to muscle pain just so I can be on this drug. A lot of times though, I really think that's a sloppy wording that they're giving you. What they really mean is your body needs time to get used to the statins at which time perhaps the adverse effects will abate. And that's different. And whether it applies to a particular patient or not, at least that's the concept. And I can at least understand that concept. Now, one of the methods that I use on this channel is to, for the sake of argument, let's accept what mainstream medical is telling us and see where it leads us. So this concept that, oh, your body needs time to adjust is often applied to statins. So what they're saying is you need time to reestablish a new homeostasis in light of a new condition that your body is experiencing. And that new condition is statins are in your system. Withdrawal effects can be seen as that same process in reverse. If your doctor denies withdrawal effects, that not only runs counter to patient experience, it's illogical. If you're gonna tell me that the drug is changing my body chemistry to the point where my body has to adjust and reach a new homeostatic condition, a new equilibrium, then when you take me off the drug, my body has to go back to a different equilibrium state than what it had been in because the conditions have changed again. To deny that there can be withdrawal adverse effects while acknowledging what I call these onboarding adverse effects, that's just totally illogical. If your doctor does that, I think it would be fair to point this out to them. So I've talked about my experience with statin withdrawal. They were generally cognitive problems from statin withdrawal talked about them in a number of videos, but I'm gonna go over them briefly right here for the viewers who haven't seen those older videos. First, I had an incident in the Green Mountains. I was hiking with my son and my dog, and I was just feeling horrible. I was feeling like I don't enjoy hiking anymore. Something is clearly wrong with me, and I don't know what it is. After a few days, it cleared, and I just went on. I said, okay, maybe I just had to get adjusted to hiking again. There was a second incident, which was far more serious, and that was when I went hiking in the Grand Canyon. We were out there for six days for 60 miles. Hiking in the Grand Canyon is hiking in a desert, so it's an environment that I'm not really accustomed to, and I had the same problem. I got extremely depressed. I felt claustrophobic. I'm out in probably the widest open space in the world, the plateau of the Grand Canyon, and I'm feeling claustrophobic. My son hadn't been with me to kind of get me through this period of what I'll call mental degradation, then bad things could have happened to me out there. There was a third incident where I had these same kind of feelings. I had had a tick bite and went to the doctor. This was after a hike, so these are all hiking related. The doctor put me on doxycycline and I started getting these depressive and other cognitive effects again. I didn't understand that. I was looking up on the internet, are there any of these known effects from taking doxycycline? I could see it giving me an upset stomach, could be killing some of your gut biota. It shouldn't be causing depression. That made no sense to me. But sure enough, after I got off the doxycycline, it went away. 
The fourth incident was I had some muscle pain. It felt like somebody had been sticking butter knives into my thighs. And I remember thinking, that's an adverse effect often associated with statins. This is the first time I've really felt it, but let me just get off them for a while and see if it abates. The very next day, I started getting these cognitive effects again. And I realized, thinking back, I think I'm going through statin withdrawal because it happened immediately after. And then I thought back to that hike in the Green Mountains. I didn't bring the statin medication with me. You don't carry extra stuff when you're out on a long backpacking trip. I'm going to be hiking, so my cholesterol is going to stay low anyway. So why do I need to bring the statin with me? Same thing with the Grand Canyon. I had left the statins home. And the tick bite in doxycycline, I just automatically, when I was given a new drug, I said, I don't want to mix drugs. I'll just take the doxycycline. I'll set the statins aside for the three-week course that I'm on this. And I thought nothing of it. That didn't even occur to me once I started getting these effects that had anything to do with the statins. On the forefront of my mind was that I was taking doxycycline. Every one of these cases was a case of statin withdrawal. That's my experience with the phenomenon. It's real. It was real for me. It probably doesn't happen with everyone, but it is a real phenomenon. So what's going on here really when it comes to the seeming lack of knowledge of statin withdrawal in the medical community? Well, first let's talk about the generative AI thing. There's incorrect information and there's misinformation. And misinformation is unethical, it's intentional. AI doesn't have an intent I believe was just giving incorrect information. It was inconsistent, contradictory, and incorrect information, which may mean it's incompetent, or if a human is doing it, it may be due to misunderstanding or missing data, and they're making their best guess, and it happens to be incorrect. So we just have to make that distinction between what's misinformation and what's incorrect information. I'm not sure that there's misinformation going on, at least not intentional. I think it's incorrect information. Some of the reason why they're not looking into it very closely may be motivated by a pro-statin bias. Is it misinformation? Is it just incorrect information? Not sure, really. Big Pharma and mainstream medical, they have no interest in studying the phenomenon of statin or withdrawal, even if it occurs to them that such a thing exists. Mainstream medical, they're not going to study what happens when you get off statins. That's not something that they're ever going to advocate. You never want to get off statins. As a matter of fact, we need more people on statins and nobody should be getting off them. So what's the point in talking about statin withdrawal effects? Big Pharma, they have no financial interest in getting people off statins. I mean, nevertheless, your doctor should have no interest in denying withdrawal symptoms. When I think of the two doctors that I brought this to, one of them just shrugged and said, oh, I'd never heard of that. He wasn't denying it, and it wasn't a judgmental, I've never heard of that. It was just a statement of, oh, that's something new to me, and maybe he'll actually recognize it in the future. So I believe that's what's going on. This phenomenon of statin withdrawal symptoms just is of no interest to the medical community because as far as they're concerned, nobody should ever get off statin, so statin withdrawal isn't a thing to be concerned about. So for my closing thoughts, this whole issue of statin withdrawal effects being unknown to the mainstream medical community, it's symptomatic of a larger problem, and that is medical blind spots when it comes to statins. In the broader picture, we see denial of adverse effects in general with excuses like, oh, it's a nocebo effect. That, that's a prevailing view. Withdrawal symptoms may seem to be of minor importance, especially if they're temporary, but if they go unrecognized, they can convince a patient to follow the very worst path. For example, suppose the patient experiences intensified depression, and that's quite often what it is. The adverse effects get intensified as the body tries returning to normal, possibly by the mechanism that Dr. Golem mentioned. But if they get this intensified depression when they get off statins, it is not illogical for them to believe that, well, maybe the statins are actually helping fight off the depression to some degree. For example, if they're more intense, unbearable perhaps, during the withdrawal period, and they were there present, but maybe not as bad while on the statin, it's not illogical to think that the statin is actually improving the condition. And you can apply this to any adverse effects, muscle pain, whatever. I was fortunate in a sense by having these problems when I was out hiking, where I was forced by circumstances to live through the entire withdrawal period, which ultimately helped me recognize what was happening. What about for someone whom the intensification lasts longer? Could they easily realize what's going on, especially in the face of incorrect and misinformation about withdrawal symptoms? They might not even think to ask if withdrawal is a thing, and if doctors don't know about it, 
as mine didn't, there's little chance of understanding what is going on. A patient's life could become a living hell with the solution being right under their noses, so to speak. With a problem easily mitigated through tapered withdrawal, as, or as Dr. Golom suggests, maybe CoQ10 supplementation, or putting up with short-term intensification effects just a little while longer with a light at the end of the tunnel. That could make it bearable, and it is the preferred ultimate outcome for them. So that's what I've got on this subject. If you appreciate this content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment on this or other topics you'd like me to cover. And if you haven't seen this video, I recommend you take a look at it now. Thanks for listening.